Four teams join tournament play on day two here in Clearwater. ECU and UCF in game one and Tulane and UConn in game two. We anticipated nine intense innings of baseball between the Pirates and the Knights and we got it. The game began as a pitcher's duel between a pair of all-conference first team selections as East Carolina's Reed Love and UCF's Zach Rogers were locked in at a 1-1 battle through six innings. Dylan Moore would put the Knights ahead with a two-out base hit through the left side in the top of the seventh. That scored runners from second and third, giving UCF a 3-1 lead. Yeah, I mean, last series when we played them in Greenville, probably they probably weren't too happy when they left. They were all close games. Everyone fought back from both teams, and uh, we knew coming in they were going to fight. They were going give to us, give us our all. But the Pirates put their rally caps on, Luke Lowry hitting a one-out triple to the corner and right in the top of the eighth, and came in to tie the score on Watkins' sack fly to right, giving the Pirates some extra life and energy in the dugout. Yeah, our dugout players, especially Brandon Saunders, he, he was on the big board dancing. He's the funniest kid in the world. I mean, every at bat, if you strike out, he's coming back. He's the first one to tell you you're all right. I mean, I can't give our dugout credit enough credit. They're awesome. They're unbelievable back there. Tied at three in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, Charlie Jorgen stepped up to the plate and scored Hunter Allen from second to send the Pirates to the winner's bracket. This was the fourth time this season East Carolina has beat UCF by one run. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, we've had a, had a stretch of three walk-offs in a row earlier this year, and those were all unbelievable, and I'm just happy that we were able to do it again this day. Speaking of rematches, the 3C2 lane was looking for some redemption against the 6 seed UConn, and they found it today at Bright House Field. Back in March, the Green Wave dropped two of three at home to the Huskies, but this evening they find themselves in the winner's bracket after a 3-1 victory. And we're just here to play the tournament and do the best we can, and the kids play great defense and we pitched really well. We were just heading in. We knew we needed to win, and uh, our pitching was great today, and couldn't ask for a better day, a beautiful day, and we got the W. A story that has followed the Green Wave all season long is their pitching staff. Patrick Deuster went seven innings strong, striking out five and only allowing one run. Closer Ian Jabot worked the last two innings with two strikeouts to register his ninth save of the season. Really important. Coach always says pitching and defense is the main thing to get a win, and Today it showed. Deucer came out and threw great, and Jabot came in and shut it down. It was so important to get a good outing from Patrick, and we needed him because we just wanted to give Corey an extra day's rest, and that's exactly what happened. And you know, he really stepped up, and then Ian did a great job of finishing. The two-lane offense got it going in the first with Lex Kaplan's first of two home runs in the game to stake an early lead. But UConn would answer in the top of the second. The Green Wave took the lead for good in the bottom of the third. Stefan Alamace with a base hit to score Jake Rogers. But Kaplan wasn't done yet. He would send another one long, his second home run of the day, and the first time a two-lane player has hit two home runs in a game this season. Feels great. I, I was seeing the ball well today. I just I saw change up on the first one and put a good swing on it, and then a fastball inside on the second one, put another good swing on it. Well, I mean, it was real clutch. I mean, he had he had great swings all day. He was able to get the head out, and um, fortunately, he hit two home runs. Alamace and Garrett Deschamps had two hits each for Tulane, which improved to 34 wins on the season. The winner's bracket and loser's bracket are both set. And again, it's a double elimination tournament, so each and every game extremely vital. For more information on all of today's games, head to theamerican.org. From Clearwater, Florida, I'm Haley Outen.